Hey everyone! So, I'd like to start a video series on printmaking, I guess. Um, so this is my first attempt at recording like little clips and editing them together. But um, this studio session, which was from a couple of days ago, was a bit of a stressful day, and I had like forgotten my tripod, which means there's some really awkward camera angles here, which you're seeing right now. And I was only able to film the process up until the locking of the press, which is um, the point where you have all of the little pieces of type or the block locked up and ready to print. Um, so this is what you're seeing right now is the type is set, which I do outside of the press bed and um, right now I'm actually trying to take a little piece of wood which we call furniture and kind of stuff it in um, into this little bundle that I've um, tied up and I decided that that was too much um, normally you wouldn't do that but you can see I kind of have these like small pieces of leading it's called or just small pieces of lead and transferring that from this galley or this almost baking sheet like thing is actually kind of difficult so um i was trying to think about how to do that in this case and this is probably one of the most time consuming parts of printmaking if you're only doing one layer which this print is the biggest most time consuming part is actually getting everything all set up and um, you can kind of see how the type moves a lot when I'm trying to move it and that was making me really nervous um, so now I'm trying to transfer it from the galley onto the printing bed and um, get everything all fancy here it's kind of hard to do that because it's a little nerve-wracking, I would say. And then, now that it's actually in the bed, we can move it to the angle that we want to print it at. And so, I'm stepping away from the press to actually get those pieces of wood or um, metal that I mentioned before called furniture. So, that's a big part of printing on a letterpress and that was a quick test of the paper size that I'm going to use so just making sure that it fits now um, it's not the most accurate test because when you ro roll or print on a letterpress you lose a couple of you lose a little bit of space um, the measurement we use is called picas, so you lose a little bit, a few picas when you're trying to print on a letterpress um, off the bottom or off the side, whatever angle you're printing at. But in general, unless you're cutting it really close, you can do that just fine. And as long as you're not printing multiple layers where registration or lining up layers would be an issue, doing what I'm doing right now isn't. Um, necessarily artistically irresponsible and so now that I know that it's gonna fit I'm going and I'm getting all the pieces of furniture so what I did is I made this I set this block of type up before I even got onto the press and I set it up to be a square that measured 30 picas by 30 picas and furniture comes in um, pica length and so there's this little cabinet of picas that I'm going to or a furniture that I'm going to that has different pica lengths and um, I grabbed a bunch of 30 pica ones so that I can kind of keep everything even and you'll see a big part of this is locking up the press means that I have to fill the entire press bed almost with this furniture so that um, the press is 
or not the press, the type or the block, whatever you're printing on, is actually locked in because the force from the um, actual barrel of the letter press will cause the type to move. So right now the biggest challenge is kind of figuring out the jigsaw of it. It's one of my favorite parts of doing a letterpress print because it's almost like Tetris and I don't know Tetris was one of my favorite games growing up so it's kind of like a fun little challenge but there are certain points that can be really challenging um, because you know sometimes things don't always fit perfectly but this um, this print was actually not too bad in terms of actually setting up the type. So um, now that metal thing with the hole in it that I just put in there um, is actually to help with the fact that things don't fit exactly perfectly. And so um, we have these things called uh, coins, which is what that is. And um, we have these little keys, well, I think, yeah, keys that you put in them and then twist it um, and they'll expand. So right now it's a preliminary check of how loose the letters are and they're pretty, they're pretty loose. So one of the things that you can never be too cautious of is checking how loose your letters are because I set that type last week or a week before this printing session and it was extremely tight but obviously over the week that I was gone it was it loosened up probably just because of the fact that like I tied the string and then over time it relaxed because it's a lot of metal that it's holding together but also because it was quite a humid day um, I took the audio out because it was really, um, really distracting, but you could hear it was pouring outside before I stripped the audio from these clips. So, um, those things kind of factor into how the actual type behaves and how the ink behaves and how all sorts of things behave, which is a fun added little challenge, but also a little... Uh, frustrating at times. So now I've set everything up and I've got the other ones. So there's my little ruler um, that I blocked with the camera, but there's a little ruler that I'm using that has the pica measurements on it. Um, and that tells me what size furniture I need to get. Um, so yeah, I measured that out, the space between that um, reglet and that other large piece of metal furniture and then I grabbed some pieces of furniture that fit that size. So now here comes my key and um, there we go. Just twisting it up to get it all nice and tight. So that's um, kind of a fun thing because you can kind of see all the letters and furniture and everything shifting. The whole premise is you want to make sure that nothing is shifting, right? Um, and sometimes if you make it too tight, um, everything will kind of push up a little bit. So you also have to check that and to make sure that things aren't pushing up or that they're not, um, that things aren't type high that shouldn't be type high. So it's kind of what I'm doing right now, checking how loose everything is. And I believe at this point, I've noticed that the word little is a little too loose. Yeah. So now I'm going in and I'm just putting more letting in there to make it um, not wiggle. And then I have to go back in and retighten it. Um, and of course, I, this is a really bad habit for printmakers, actually, so education 
by like doing as I say, not as I do. So don't do this if you are, are ever on a letterpress. So don't leave, <laughs> don't leave the key in like that while you're working. Because um, one time I know somebody who left a key in like this and then they tried to ink up the press and they, uh, the barrel got stopped. It got caught on that. And they were like, why is my press not rolling over? And it was a, it was a bit traumatic at the moment because they were going with a little bit of force because you kind of get into a groove when you're about to ink. Um, and they, yeah, they were a little, they were a little shocked, but, um, the press wasn't damaged and nothing bad happened. I mean, they're very hardy machines, but there's also not very many of them left. So like, it's kind of terrifying whenever you hear like a crunch or it stops unexpectedly. So, um, that is a terrible, terrible thing. Do not do it. Um, so now that I've fixed the type, I'm checking it again and it looks like it's ready to go. So now uh, here's a different shot of me just wiggling the type and checking it. And I thought it would, it's a nice, decent shot because you can actually see what it says up close. And you can see how it looks. We went from um, an empty press bed that I showed at the beginning of the video to this. Um, and now, I don't know why I filmed this, but I guess it was like I wanted to, to show what kind of ink I was using because the lighting in the studio is a little yellow so you can see that I'm using this beautiful gold ink and then I'm switching the um, press from print to trip so if you have it on print it prints and if you have it on trip it just inks the letters up and doesn't print so now I'm just inking up the letters and yeah there's the letters all inked up and ready to make a beautiful little print. So there we go. All right. Well, I guess I'll end this off by saying that I hope that this was somewhat interesting and that you all um, learned something new about letterpress today. If you or anybody you know would be interested in seeing the whole process from start to finish or seeing the actual print process where paper is loaded up and printed, feel free to let me know and I will not forget my tripod and I will do my best to make a nice informative video for you guys. Um, and until then, I have put up this nice lovely picture of the actual result from that printing session um, and so you can see the effort that all the printmakers you know if you know any printmakers go through to make um, all the lovely art that you see in your daily lives so um, I guess don't forget to check the description I'll have some more information in there about parts of the letterpress and also um, I'll have my information about my social media and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Um, and feel free to check me out. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day.